Next, we're going to take a look at the new SI-012 Intelligent Soldering Iron by Secure. Intelligent, well that means it cools down when you're not using it and as soon as you pick it up, it gets back up to operating temperature within a couple seconds. Let's check this one out. Got another package in the mail today. Let's open it up and see what I got. It's uh, from Secure. You can tell from the plastic wrap on here. And it's another soldering station. So let's take a look at this one, see what I got. That comes with uh, some lead free solder. Well, we know where this is going. That's going in the bin. I don't use lead free solder here, sorry. comes with a little wrench, a little soldering iron holder, and here is the iron itself. This is another one that will run off of a, a low voltage power supply, and it's got a couple different tips with it. It's got two different sizes of tips. It's got a knife and a conical tip. Cool. And here is the iron itself. It's see-through. It'll plug, you can plug it into either a power supply or a USB-C adapter. We're going to have to try this out. I will power this up with my USB-C adapter. As I just so happen that I've got one here, a heavy-duty USB-C adapter. This is a power adapter I'm using. is rated at, uh, this one will do 15 volts, no, 20 volts. 20 volts at 3 amps. So this should get this iron up to temperature pretty quick. So it can use... Good to know this one can it says on here it can use both the, the t12 uh, b2 and the tsk tips so one of these is the t12 and the other one is a, a, a tsk which one's which so i think this is the t12 anyway if you want to use the other tip you have to Remove the screw that opens up the, the back of the uh, iron and then you can change and put the other screws in up front here for the other heater, right? So that it'll connect down here. And you can see right here, there's the two connection points. So if you want to use the smaller, shorter irons, you can use that. So to change those, it would just be a matter of We just had a power surge. It would just be a matter of opening this up, I think. It didn't seem like it fit it, but uh, if the screw just came out, this should open up, I would think. This just opens up like that and then you can change and add you can either move the other two clips from here up to the, to the front of the board here or have them on the back but this is obviously for the other iron so you can plug the other iron in like that I'm going to just be using the the t12 tip on this one I just wanted to show how this opens up for those of you inclined, that if you wanted to change to the shorter tip, you could do it. And then we'll put this screw back in. All right, let me plug in this other tip. And it can be secured if you want to secure the tip in. There, you can put another little set screw. There's another little set screw that goes into the front of it here. And this one will hold the, the tip in place. So 
sort of power the iron up again you can power it up on it'll take anywhere from uh, what is it here 12 volts to 25 volts uh, we're gonna feed it with this is 20 volts this one will will feed it and it's off right now it tells me here it's on 20 volts on the little display and the tip temperature is now set for 300 degrees Celsius to turn it on you just press the button and it should turn on there we go is that the one uh, one of these buttons will turn it on okay that's just for setup the iron is fully menu driven. You can do things such as change the temperature from Celsius to Fahrenheit and the standby time, etc. Shutdown time. I'll go through all the menus in a minute. Yeah, this is temperature compensation. And one of these buttons I'll tap to. There we go. Move down to the next one. Temperature step in 50 degrees. Start heat is off. Okay, idle. OLED, volt, calibrate, about. If we get out of this, oops. Got to kind of navigate. I haven't read the instructions, but they, they're all very similar because I have other irons from them. There we go. Just push and hold. And there it goes. You can see how quick this temperature is rising. You get up the temperature, just push and hold the A button to turn it on. And it's ready to melt solder within a few seconds. As you can see, it's already up to temperature. So I'm going to use this one. Uh, I'm going to do a repair video. Uh, and I'm going to use this iron on it just to show you guys how this little iron performs. One of the features of these secure irons are that they will go to sleep and go down to a standby temperature so you're not keeping the iron necessary or unnecessarily hot when you're not using it. So if you set it down and you're not using it for whatever duration you've set for the, the standby, it will turn the temperature off on the iron. It'll actually go down to a, a lower standby temperature. And then when you need to use it again, you just tap the button and away you go. Um, and then it'll also go to sleep. If you've set it down for, I think it's five minutes, it'll shut right off. To cool the iron down which is which is nice if you're one of these people that tend to forget your iron and leave it turned on all night I'm guilty of that I've done that more than once where I've walked away and totally forgot about the iron being plugged in and turned on and uh, I come downstairs in the morning and oh the soldering iron has been running all night that's happened more than once so uh, it's a nice feature that it will turn off if it hasn't been used it's still in the working mode now so it's still hot because the timer hasn't expired. And basically how this works is it's monitoring the tip temperature. So if you're, act if you're actively soldering, it's al always seeing the tip temperature dropping as you are applying solder and heating this up. So it'll stay on uh, operational mode. But once it sits without being used for a period of time, it will go into standby. And then if it sits in the standby mode until the, the sleep timer expires, it'll shut right off. And then we can, of course, adjust the temperature here by tapping the buttons. We go up 50 degrees at a time. So now we go up to 450 degrees or 400 degrees or 350. I've got it set in 50 degree increments now. And then to shut it off, if I push and hold the A button, I believe that shuts it off. There, yeah, stop. And that'll shut it off. If we go back into the, the, the settings, okay, iron, if I go into idle, and press and hold you'll see that the idle time is set to 180 seconds so uh, after three minutes it will go down to the standby temperature which was idle So idle uh, sleep time is 180 seconds and your sleep temperature is 200 degrees. And if you want to change that to a higher temperature so that it takes less time to warm up again, you can certainly change the, the sleep temperature. So if you don't want it cooling down at all, you could turn your sleep temperature all the way up to, I think, 400 degrees. So you could keep it constantly on if you didn't want the irons 
cooling down after a period of time or you can set it to cool down a bit but still stay warm enough that it'll heat up right away but you can pick that and the sleep time if I tap on here I can change how long it stays before it goes to sleep and this is in seconds so you can set the timer quite long if you're if you're going to be using the iron and, and on and off throughout the day and you don't want it cooling down you can set that sleep time one, one minute is the shortest so you can dial this up for a much longer period of time there, 990 seconds and then again you can you can set the temperature that it will idle at so instead of it being at 400 degrees it'll go down to 300 or 200 or whatever you set it to just press and hold and now you can set your standby temperature it's going to save the tip because there's nothing worse on a solder tip than, than uh, leaving it sit at full melted temperature. Now that it's cooled down, it's below the temperature that the solder melts. And right now, if we get out of this out of this menu, you'll see that it's it's actually in stop mode now, so it's actually cooling right down. But if I put it on, if I turn it on, I've got it set for 450, which is really hot. If I press and hold, it'll say work, and you'll see how quick this warms up. and solder's already melted at this point. If you want a brighter display, you can crank the OLED dis display up as well. Turn the brightness way up on it. The direction option just reverses the display. It's for left-handed operators, so if you're holding the iron in your left hand, the display will appear the other direction and it also of course reverses the buttons so if you don't want the front button turning the iron on and off you want the back button to do it you can swap the buttons around low volt off is if you're because the iron can be run off of a battery if you're running this off of a, a battery pack you can set the voltage so that if the voltage drops below a certain voltage it'll shut the iron off that's to protect if you're running it off of um, lithium-ion batteries because of course the beauty with units like this is that uh, they they can be operated off of a battery now pressing and holding the the a key here will switch it between working mode and stop when it's in stop it turns the heat off completely uh, the standby mode is if you're not using the iron and the timer expires it will then cool it down to the temperature that you've selected which again you could set that at your working temperature so if you didn't want the iron ever turning off until you push and hold the button it would hold it there it would just completely bypass that uh, that timer the timer would still expire but it would it would hold the iron at whatever temperature at whatever temperature you told it to hold it at so now as the iron cools down you'll see that the solder will, will stop melting once we get down to about 200 degrees i think is where solder 200 degrees Celsius is where solder stops melting. I usually keep my irons in the uh, Fahrenheit mode because for solder I understand the Fahrenheit temperature more so than uh, Celsius. For those that want the, the display to be in Fahrenheit you can change it as well. Press and hold the B button it says iron then press and hold the A button and then we can scroll down temperature compensation buzzer temperature Celsius press and hold and then change it to Fahrenheit. Now it'll display in Fahrenheit. And we should also be able to adjust our temperature step as well. On here, working temperature, 572 Fahrenheit. We want to turn that up. We can set that up to say 700 degrees, which is typically where I work with soldering. 700 degrees Fahrenheit. There we go. And start heat. Well, that'll turn it on as soon as you plug it in, or or and or um, and temperature step in, say 50 degrees Celsius or 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's just say 25. We'll go in 25 degree steps. I guess it only gives you even. So if we go 10 degrees at a time. And then if I let that exit, get okay, a let it time out. Okay, so if I put it on, it'll now go up to 700 degrees Fahrenheit. Press and hold. Okay, 
now the temperature will start climbing. You'll see it'll climb up very quickly. Now I've set the, the standby timer to one minute because I want to show you what's going to happen. So now it's, it's hot. It's at 700 degrees. It's melting solder. If I let the iron sit for one minute, it will shut off. I just don't want it rolling over. I want you guys to see this, what happens. Because the iron, is, it's, it should automatically, if I pick it up and shake it or move it, I've turned the sensitivity up. Once it goes to sleep at the one minute point, all I need to do is pick it up and it will turn it back on and start warming up. So let's let it go to sleep. So the iron has now gone to sleep. It's at 300, it's sleeping at 392 degrees Fahrenheit. If I move it, it should turn on. There you see, I just turned it, I just, and it's now turned itself on. So it has a motion sensor in it. So the nice thing about this iron and other ones that Secure have is that if you set it down, it will go to sleep. It'll go down to its resting temperature after a period of time. And then all you need to do is pick it up and it'll heat back up again. That, I think, is a very cool feature. Again, uh, I'll put a link in for this one in the description. And I'm going to use this iron on my next video. Anyway, that's a, a quick look at this little new soldering iron by Secure. Thanks for watching.